right. Hi again, Attorney Steve Vondran. We're back. Licensed Practice Law, California and Arizona. We take federal trademark cases and copyright cases, intellectual property nationwide. All right. In this video, we are going to be talking about the getting a trademark without hiring a lawyer. Okay. So a lot of people want to come out of the gates, a lot of startups, they want their trademarks, but they're going, yeah, then the attorneys want like 1500 bucks or two grand. And so this video really is about how to get your trademark or to apply for a trademark without an attorney if you're in that position. So let's just go, the trademarks is basically a federal, this is a federal um, registration system, okay? So there are state trademarks. You can register to get state trademark protection in your state. Most states that I'm aware of have a state trademark registration system, but really the granddaddy and what everybody wants is these federal trademarks. These are going to give you the nationwide rights. That's what a lot of companies are looking for, especially just getting out of the gate, wanting that protection that they can sell nationwide. Okay. And this is for your goods or your services. You can get a trademark for your products. You can get a service mark for your services. Okay. So what I'm looking for actually is a, I'm going to be going for a service mark to describe my services from my law firm. And I'm looking for the name the first name in legal services so one of my branding techniques that i use on facebook on my live videos and elsewhere is attorneysteve.com the first name in legal services and so i want to go get a trademark for that today so what i want to do is just go to the uspto that's the patent and trademark office click on your trademark button and if you want to search it's always recommended that you first do a search just to see if there's anyone else already there why would you pl apply for a trademark if somebody's already there, you would be wasting your money. Okay, and once you file these things, you can't get them, you can't get your money back. Okay, so let's just go the first name in legal services and let's do a search and see if anybody has that. So I search, I don't see anything there, so I feel pretty comfortable. Now, I've also done that, which you haven't seen, I've also done what I just call a common law search, searching around, seeing, seeing what else might be out there but i didn't see anything so i feel pretty good that i can get a service mark for the first name in legal services which describes my services we are the first name attorneysteve.com okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say fine i feel good about that i'm going to go get that trademark so here's how i do it okay so go back to your uspto click your trademarks button go apply online now this is t's and there's different um, ways to apply, but I just come right here to the T's, okay? And you have your T's reduced form, regular form, T's plus form. Now you can see here, the classes of goods and services here are only 225, and it goes up from there. Um, the T's reduced fee form, if you have a long description that you want to get in there, this is, it's better to go this way. I just filed one, for example, for clothing, and because I had hurt, you know, shirts, hats, hoodies, you know all that stuff I put it in here with a with a uh, with a special description of the goods okay so but I'm gonna go for my purposes I'm gonna go right here it's 225 per class of goods and services and we'll get to that in a second but here's all you do click on this this is gonna pull up the page read everything on this page I don't have time to go over all this for you this is quick and dirty but read everything on the page so you understand what's going on and for me, since I'm an attorney filing this application, I'm going to get right into it. Yes. Um, if you had a previously um, saved file that you were working from, you could do that. But I'm just going to go continue. So that's easy. Page one. Owner of the mark is going to be my law office right there. So you type in the name of your law office or whoever's going to own the mark. And it could be a corporation. In my case, it's a corporation. It could be individual. It could be... A partnership joint venture you could just be a sole proprietor it doesn't really matter um, get that in there if you're a company you may want to consider corporations and we can help you with California and Arizona corporations but once you select that get your state in there this is going to be California okay and then you're gonna have your street address so we're just gonna use our our office address there up in San Francisco California and you can do your zip code do your zip code there and you can type in some of this is pre-populated from previous trademark filings your phone your fax the items in red are required you have to have those these you do not but these can be deemed as helpful if you have 
a website you can put that in there if you want and I'm just gonna I'll just put for now I'll put attorneysteve.com I've got my email address in there so bingo so now you're done with two pages okay check to make sure everything's right you want this to be accurate okay so check to make sure everything's right if you say yes that looks good go continue down here at the bottom okay so now you're down with two pages you're working your way through here okay owner of the mark corporation oops uh, you must specify through one or if you make an error you will see this up here at the top which is good it just alerts you that there's an error you must specify through one of the four checkbox DBA also known as the actual name so here uh, well, the problem is I accidentally pre-populated that I did not want to do that so I'm not I'm not a DBA I'm not also known as it's none of that so um, let's just keep it at that and let's try to continue again Okay, so now we're on the next page. Now they're asking me what kind of mark I'm applying for. If you're doing a logo and all that stuff, you can click here, special. You can also get trademarks for sounds. People don't know that. A lot of people don't know that, but like the Intel sound, do, do, do. You know, you can, or any, any kind of sound mark that's distinguishing your goods and services, you can get a sound mark for. That's pretty cool if you think about it. Um, so think about that uh, this is your logos but for me this is just a standard character and I'm just gonna put the first name the first if I can type it that is the first name in legal services okay so that's what I want you can preview it here the first name in legal services like well maybe I'll just capitalize the I while I'm at it you know so we'll just We'll just do that. The first name in legal services. Okay, that looks good. That's what I want. That's going to be my trademark, or should we call it my service mark? And same thing when you get a trademark or a service mark, you get the R with the circle on it. That's what you want. Okay, so that's what we're going for. Now, if you have an additional statement to actually, you have to disclaim something. Like, let's just say you're trying to get the word um, amazing legal. Well, you, you'll have to disclaim the words amazing you'll have to disclaim the word legal and you would just come through here check the box and you would just come in here this is important and, and a lot of times I'll see applications that are rejected or you'll get an office action letter from the USPTO because they'll say you didn't disclaim the word legal you can't be the you can't have a monopoly on the word legal what are you thinking so but because mine's a phrase the first name in legal services you know I should be good on that so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go with that so I'm just gonna put the first name in legal services no additional statement because it's just a slogan and it's in its and you know if you want like I say you know you could put you can put this I mean it's up to you but you so you can come here and then maybe just to disclaim it we'll put I'm not seeking any exclusive right to use the word legal services apart from the mark so that may help the examiner okay these these once filed they go to an examiner who examines them to see if there's any prior marks or any conflicts or anything out there in what we call the common law or any domain registrations or state trademark registrations they're looking for confusingly similar similar marks if there's already a confusingly similar mark that's out there in the big world or if there's a pending trademark application you might not get your mark that's why it's kind of important to search do a good search in advance before you're trying to file these so you've seen we've rolled through these pages pretty quick actually so now we're down here to adding and again read these pages lots of information on here there's some helpful videos and things that can that can help you if you don't know what you're doing okay of course we also always recommend seeking legal advice this video is not a substitute for legal services or seeking legal ser or seeking it's not a substitute for you know retaining a counsel and discussing with a lawyer okay it's just general information but I'm gonna add goods or services is the next thing you do now what this is basically is so I have my my legal services and you know it what the USPTO has done is broken the the basically broken the business world down into 45 different classifications and you're trying to tell the trademark examiner which classification you're in you can't get a protection in every single category I mean like I wouldn't get first name and legal services for clothing I mean that wouldn't be I mean I guess you could do it if you wanted to but you know I want to get into the legal services category so what you got to do is hit your add goods and services 
Okay, now up here, I can just, this is very helpful, legal services. Let's just type that here. So here's the different classes. Now remember I said it was zero to 45. You have these different classifications. Now, also, um, so let's just look at that. Actually, I'm, I don't wanna digress on you, but so you have all these different um, legal services that you can that you can find out some of them most of them as you can see are in class 45 so that's looking like it's going to be the the um, the category that I want to be in but let's see you also see like 36 automotive club services providing reimbursement for legal fees see that's not exactly where I want to be so what you're looking for is this one, you know, legal services, namely providing customized information, counseling, advice, and litigation services in all areas of international law. Well, I'm not doing international law, so that doesn't quite fit. And as I mentioned in, in the first screen, if you have a custom um, description that you want to use, you can go to the T's RF, that's a reduced fee, that would have been the different link to start with, and you can go in there and put your custom names in. But... So I'm kind of looking for something, you know, like this legal services, namely providing customized documentation, information, counseling, advice and consultation services in all areas of and you can special specialize your law. So that's pretty close, you know, so I'll take a look at that. And then what you do basically you can come down here insert your checked entry so I clicked as you can see where was that class 45 legal services okay so you got your class 45 and you have different things here legal advisory services legal consultation services um, like I said, all kinds of different things, but just, let's just say that you feel you feel good and you say, let's let's go. Let's insert the checked entries. And we're right here, actually. Um, so legal services, namely providing customized documentation, information, counseling, advice and consultation services in all areas of. Now you can get narrow and you could put, you know, copyright law all areas of copyright law that would give you really more specific protection but I'm gonna put intellectual property law is what I'm gonna put okay so we're just gonna add that actually we're gonna remove that okay so you have that there okay so we have our class 45 we have our legal services okay and that's intellectual property law that's what we want to do let's see Let's just do, but let's open it up a little bit more because sometimes I do different cases. I'm going to put business, real estate, and intellectual property law since I also do cases in these other areas. Okay, so what you're going to do there, so you have that and you are going to, you are going to insert the checked entries. Now you can see what it's done. Okay, so now we're on the next page, the basis for filing page. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Again, a little helpful videos here if you want to do it. Um, if you want to go and add more classes in, of goods or services, in other words, you want to be in additional classes besides 45, maybe you wanted to get back in that other one, or maybe you wanted to get into the educational class or clothing class, you would go, go back and add more classes. Okay, but I'm fine with this. And again, you want to just check it, okay? I got my class, legal services. This is what I'm doing. Advice, counseling, consultation services in all areas of business, real estate, and intellectual property law. Okay, so I'm narrowing it down there. So if somebody wanted to come in and do this in divorce law, well, maybe maybe they would have an argument that they're that it's different. But there would also be an argument that there's a likelihood of con consumer confusion which would allow, if my trademark registered, would allow me to try to oppose somebody else's registration of the same mark. So, but I like to put it in the areas where I practice. I like to be specific and say, this is what I do. And if you're in divorce law, do I really care? Um, if you say you're the first name in legal services and divorce law, you know, not really. I mean, I'm not, I'm not competing with you. I'm not concerned that our, our clients are gonna be confused. Okay, so let's get down. So now we've got our trademark. Um, we have done that now let's see what else we have here 
Okay, so you're going to do the section 1B. Now, there actually, I should just say, these are the two main ways that marks are registered. There's foreign marks here, but let's not concern ourselves with that. Either you're actually using this mark in commerce now, or you're intending to use it. So intent to use is what we call the 1B filing. That's for the startup companies, and they're saying, well, I'm just starting up, and I but I want to preserve this so we can go and put a lot of marketing and put a bunch of uh, advertising. We want to get some investors. You know, let's get our trademark. So this would be your 1B filing. If you're already using it in commerce, that's interstate commerce between at least two states, then you can go do an intent now. So what I have, if I go to my, my main website, you can see that I have this. This is my main website. You can see that I have this here. Welcome to attorneysteve.com, the first name in legal services. So I'm using this on my internet, which is accessible by all states and countries. So that's basically being used in interstate commerce. So we're good with that. Now, so let's do, so I'm actually using the marks. So let's do a section 1A, actually using the mark in commerce now. Let's click that button. And I must have already clicked it. So let's just go continue. Whoops, no, I guess I didn't. So it's, sometimes you got to play with this a little bit. So I'm using my mark now. Okay. Now it's asking me, you can see here, let's just, and again, you got your videos up here, instructional basis, blah, blah, blah. If you want to add more goods and services, just go here. Okay. And again, if you wanted to customize this, you would go back and use the T's reduce fee RF. Okay. And then you could customize it. But so I've got this you know, fairly well customized. Now, what they need is a specimen. Since you said you're using it in commerce, they want to see a specimen. So I go, okay, let's get you a specimen from my computer. Let's choose a file. And I'm going to go to my downloads. And I'm going to do the first name in legal services. There's my, there's my JPEG. And that's just a shot of my home screen. Okay, that's all I'm doing. So I'm going to attach that. Okay, first name, there it is, my JPEG. I'm going to attach that. And there it is. You can see it linked there, so you're good, right? Now, you're going to want to return to application. And you see your file is attached. That's what you need to make sure that your file is attached. And it's asking you for a description. This is um, an example of using my slogan on the home page to my legal website. So tell them what it is. And then they want to know the date of first mark used anywhere, anytime the mark was first used. And I've used it some, some prior times to this. I, I, and you know I don't know the exact date, but let's just say I know I was using it in the month of October, so I'm just going to use that date. And I believe that's also the first date of use in commerce. So I've been using this for about, you know, about a month now. So I'm going to just go, actually, it's not 2013. Check your dates. As I said, always check. So that's when I've been using the mark in commerce. Okay, so we're doing that. We've got this. So we've got our classification. We got our description of the goods and services. We got our 1B is our filing basis that's intent to use, okay? And we've got, we've got our specimen attached, we've got a description, we've got our dates of first use. So now we're going to assign the filing basis down here, okay? So now you got that. And again, they're telling you, you have to make sure the statements are accurate um, because you know, you know they have to be accurate or you're, you're subject to cancellation. They're also, if you're doing the 1B, which is the intent to use, notice here I'm doing the 1A, which means I'm actually using it. If you're doing the 1B, you have to have a bona fide intention to use the mark with all goods and services. So when you make that big laundry list of all the clothing things that you're going to get a trademark on with your intent to use, and you say, well, I want to make this incredible clothing line with every piece of be, be, be careful because you, there needs to be a bona fide intention to use the mark on all goods and services. And the examiner could require that uh, proof, by the way. So, but that's it. So you're getting that set up. So now you go continue. 
Um, if you have an attorney doing this, which is me, then yes, I would do, you know, I would do my name. You can add, add this information in and, you know, street address. I can add all that in. Again, I've got my firm in there. That's PC. Sometimes you got to kind of mess with that. So we're just going to do that. Check your addresses, city, state, zip, boom, check your emails. And then really all you're doing down here is check to authorize them to the USPTO to communicate with you. So do continue. We got the address right. Hit continue. You're working it. Okay, so now you're getting down here. You're trying to register this on the principal register where you want to be. Um, so just check everything. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Here they're going to ask you to add a secondary email address. I'll put my wife. Sometimes she'll be on there if I need it. So again, so that's it. You just double check everything. Looks good. Phone number, right? Continue. Now, as you see, I only picked one class and that was that legal services class 45. So I'm seeking the service mark in that area. Okay. 225 is the fee. I mean, I'm using the T's online. So that's 225. Not too bad, right? That's is all I'm paying for a trademark. Okay. So uh, signature method, I'm just going to do sign directly right here. I'm going to put this, you really just kind of put your, whoops, kind of just put your initials in the brackets there. See how I'm using those brackets? You put my name, there's my name, pre-populates my phone, and then click on that, you'll get your date, 11 one So that's really it. Read the declaration, you're signing this basically, saying that you, all your statements are true, that you're being uh, honest and accurate. And then you're just simply going to validate. Okay, so whoops, I forgot. See again, they put something. So I forgot the signatory's position. And I'm just going to put attorney. Forgot to put that in there. Then I'm going to validate. Okay, then you get to this page. You're just about done. You're just about done. Here's your chance to check what you've done. You've got your input. Go ahead and take a peek at that. And just go down and make sure this is, information is accurate. Once you submit it, you may have a hard time changing anything. Okay, so we got the mark. The, I've got my slogan there. The first name in legal services. Make sure that looks right. The mark consists of standard characters without any claim to a particular font, style, color, size, or color. I don't care. I just want the name and then I'll figure out how I want to use it. There's my address, a phone number, got a website there just for reference, corporation in California. Here's my international class, 45. Here's my identification. We got a section 1A filing. It, I've been used anywhere at least as early as 10-1. And my first use in commerce is about the same date. I started using it the same time. And my specimen, okay? So if you got all that in there, you gotta be feeling pretty good. These are some extra areas where you can translate, and that's one of the screens if you've got to go back. If you're using someone's name, image, or likeness, you got to get consent. So, but other than that, and I've got my disclaimer, no claim is made to the exclusive right to use legal services apart from the mark shown. I can't be the only person that uses that. All right, so you got all that down. Looks pretty good. I got my T's plus. All right, so let's just go back. And I feel good. Let's just check the mark one last time. The first name in legal services looks good. Let's go back. And here's some other things that you can look at, but I really don't focus on. I give a second little email acknowledgement there. You got to put your email in a bunch of times. So there it is. Boom, boom, boom. Looking good in the hood. And then you come over here. If you've read and understood the pay, again, read these instructions. Don't skip over them just because I am. I've read these, so I'm not going to read them again. But take your time. Read everything in here. Okay. And then really, once you're done with that, click that box. Pay, submit. Pay, submit. Okay. That's going to take you to a payment page. Okay. Now, if you're registered in here, you can sign in. I just pay as a guest. Bada bing. Hit that. Get in there. Um, I'm not going to do this page for you, but you know, that's it. You're going to put your credit card payment in and wada bing, bada bingo. That's how you file a trademark people. That's how you do it. That's how the big fancy lawyers do it. We all go through this page. So there you have it. Never let it be said that you can't start your business on a shoestring budget, get your corporations, get your trademarks, 
protect your intellectual property. And if you need help, where are you going to go? AttorneySteve.com, the first name in legal services. Thank you all. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like my channel, like my videos, give me a subscribe. If you've got any comments, give me some comments. Feel free to share this video on your social media networks. And I hope you guys go out and kill it in business. Make millions, baby. Have fun. Do what you love and fire your boss. Just kidding. That's one of our jokes. Fire your boss and start your own company. Okay. Take care, everybody. Oh,